Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and darn it, I do have a hole in this sock, which means I will need to darn it. Now, darning, we do associate with sock holes, but we can use darning for decoration. We can use it to do an extra coating on elbows so that they don't wear out as quickly, and they're not that hard to do. And there's a few different things that we can use along the way. What we're going to need is a darning mushroom or a darning egg. This does look like a mushroom and that's why it's called a mushroom. But you can also get a darning egg and well, it does look like an egg. We're going to need some tapestry needles and something to darn the hole. Now there was a day where you could go to the store and buy darning wool, but it's very hard to come by. So we can use acrylic or wool that we would knit with. We can use embroidery floss. And if you have a craft and hobby store near you, you might be able to find a little piece of wool and it would be used for tapestry. The idea is that number one, you're going to have a color that matches unless you're going to do it decorative. And we would usually have the same weight as the sock. But in this case, I am going to just do this acrylic yarn over top of this hole. If it's a flat area, we don't need something that is round. But when we have a sock, it's kind of hard to hold this and darn at the same time. And that's where the mushroom comes in. This particular one is from Hemline and it does have this little rubber band on the end. So that can come off. You put that little mushroom into the end. Just roll that band right back onto that position. We want this surface as smooth as we can, so we can darn that hole without any lumps. Now this is definitely too thick, so I could split it. But in this case, I'm going to show you with the thick yarn so you can really see how we're going to do this. Darning needles do not have a sharp point as sharp as a regular sewing needle. They do have the points, and the pointier ones are for the finer wools. The more of a round end would be for like a chunky knit sock or sweater so that the wool would be heavier. So I'm just going to thread that big needle and then give myself lots of wool. We do not want to start the end with a knot because then it would feel uncomfortable. I'm going to start darning on one side, but I will be pulling the wool in from the other side. So I just do a little running stitch and pull that in till it clumps really close to the end. When we are darning, we're going to darn about a quarter inch from that hole. I'm going to be able to bring this over and I do want to make a straight line. And I'm going to pick up a little piece there and pull that through. Coming straight, I'm going to do another stitch. From there, I'm going to go there, and pick up another stitch. So I'm not stitching underneath, I'm picking up a stitch and I'm going to continue that back and forth method until I've covered that hole going about a quarter of an inch. So my threads are tight but not pulling the sock. The next is I'm going to do some weaving. I'm going to start on this side. I'm going to go up and down, over and under those threads. Take one stitch and I'm going to repeat but where I've gone over, I'm going to go under. So it's just like we're weaving a basket. Take another stitch right where that thread comes out because we do want to try to keep it nice and straight. And then that third row is going to be the same as the first. We are always going up and over on the opposite side. And I'm just going to continue that. So you can see where we have this little weaving going on. Because we cannot tie that knot, I'm going to weave one more time, but that last row, I'm going to go through some of my stitches. So I'm stabbing right through the middle of my stitch, 
coming out and then go back in and go through the center of a few more stitches. As you're pulling your wool or your thread through, if you put your thumb lightly over top of that area, it's going to prevent that thread from tangling. So on that last stitch, I'm just going to go back up. You can see where if I don't hold that end, it can create a bit of a knot. But if I hold that as I'm pulling through, it prevents that from tangling up. Now I can trim that off. And that is all there is to darning. Now you can really see the weaving with this heavier thread. And in this pair of socks, I will definitely want to use something finer. So I could take that wool and separate it. This wool has four strands, so I could separate it to two, or I could separate it to one. So the one would definitely be a finer weave that would match this sock better. Heavier stitching like this really makes a nice decorative part in sweaters or on the elbows of sweaters that you want to keep strong. Now I have done a fairly square pattern, but if you have a long hole, yours would be rectangular. You can also do it decorative and change the shape. So I could draw a diamond shape and then just follow that shape, a circle, a heart, and when we take that sock off of the mushroom or the egg, it lays nice and flat and there are no knots. And when we're done darning that sock, we can take this little mushroom apart and keep our nice big darning needles right inside. So now we won't lose the darning needles. Darning is really quite easy. We're just weaving in and out. So all of the threads are on the top and they're nice and smooth. So having this little mushroom shape definitely helps darn those holes so that they fit the shape of the sock. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe. I'm on Instagram, Facebook. I do have a newsletter. It's all free under So Very Easy. Come on back. Bye for now.